I'll temporarily hide my webcam so you guys can see all the ELLs. Platinum Heroes, very fun team. I've got a lot of friends on the team. They've got a lot of players. They can obviously only use three of them. Shadan, Young Yakov, Kalazur. Actually, for them, it's pretty tough to select. For us, it's a little bit easier. As we have only five, and in general, only th four of them play. Don't really expect any ruddies anytime soon. These are the matchups today. Nikic versus Trigger, Goblin versus Rainer, and Polish art, not to be confused with Russian art, is going to duke it out with Serro. You surprised that Nikic didn't win the Bulgarian qualifier? I am not, because he's from Belarus. So, he was not eligible. <laughs> I am surprised, however, that Nidix did not win it. Uh, I did expect Nidix to win it, and Nidix lost to the other Bulgarian Zerg called MSRM. Sometimes we call him Mushroom, but I don't think that is what his nickname is actually all about. Anyway, apparently no time to waste. Let's get it on. Here we go, our second to last clan bar of the regular season. This is the third time that Basilisk is competing in the WTO code S. In season one, we lost in the grand finals. Season two, we lost in the lower bracket finals. How far will we go this time? I think it's time to go all the way. I would really love to win WTO code S one time. It'd be amazing. And let's hope today we can take another step towards the grand prize, number one. Top left side, the man from Belarus, it is Nikic for the Platinum Heroes. Bottom right side, playing these games from Korea, guys. It is a Trigger, our Canadian Protoss. Trigger is going to spend some time in Korea. I don't know how long exactly he's planning on being there, but I think for quite some time. Oh. He just wanted a different environment. He is obviously happy in Canada, but he wanted something else. And right now he's having a good time over in Korea together with Australia, Future, and of course Clem as well. If you put yourself in this round, that would have been a possibility for Ruddy vs. Goblin. We had that, because in the very first season, we actually had to play the WTL Code A qualifiers. And I think Reiner was not available, and we didn't have any partnerships, so I had to play. So it was a several Trigger and me. And I actually had to play against Goblin. We went for a respectable 1-1. I took the 1-0 lead on Gresvon, and then, I don't know, Goblin won. Probably with some random all-in game too. I forgot the details, doesn't really matter. My game obviously solid, straightforward macro all the way, baby. <laughs> that may not have exactly how it's gone down, but... It was a 1-1, I can tell you guys that much. Mm. Hello, Max. Standard openings so far here. Nobody doing anything too weird. Nikish has gone for regular hatch first. A spawning pool. Circling speed. As a trigger is working with the adepts and he's gonna go Stargate. After Stargate, I'm kinda expecting Blink Stalkers out of Trigger. I feel like he's pretty happy with those. Just a couple Oracles into the Blinky Boys plus one. And then I don't know if he's gonna be very aggressive or if he's willing to take a more passive route. My Belarusian friend has gone up to three bases in a vertical manner. It does not take the triangle as the third base. Firing up a couple of extra links. A lot of the Eastern European Zerg, uh, Zergs really like making those 14, 16 links a little bit earlier. Not just to deal with these adapts, but to actually run them to the other side of the map and see if they can get a cancel on the third base. Young Jakob does it very often. Vanya obviously no stranger to early links. I think Nikic likes to do this stuff too. Doesn't really seem to be the case this time, though. We're just keeping them at home and making sure that the adapts of Trigger cannot find any damage. Void Ray activates Prismatic, kills an Overlord, is gonna cancel it. Obviously, Void Rays are a lot slower if Prismatic Alignment is activated. If there's nothing for them to shoot at, it's pointless to let it run. 
Trigger probably pretty confident that as long as he plays a solid defensive game in the beginning, he's going to be okay here. Can't underestimate uh, Nikic though, he's very good. Played in the big rain bout once, an absolutely fantastic best of five against Goblin. It is very hard for me to say what the best best of five we ever had was, because we've done it for 64 weeks. 64 times 4 is 246, something like that. It's been a lot of series, but Goblin against Nikic is without a doubt one of the best 10. It was incredibly good, incredibly close, impossible to call. And obviously Goblin is a really good player too. Trigger has not gone for Blink, guys. It is actually just a Void Ray into an Oracle. Into very quick Resonating Glaive Adept. This build was around a while ago, then I kind of felt like it fell out of fashion. And now it's back. And a lot of the Protosses, especially Korean Protosses, are spamming it. Nikic has gone for a Bailing Nest instead of a Roach Warn. I personally don't think that necessarily has to be bad news. Roaches are more solid, and in general with enough roaches you'll never die. Banelings can be a little bit hit or miss, but I think Banelings also give you better cleanup potential. Where you can just shut it all down immediately if you get one good connection. So Trigger needs to be very, very cautious with the shades. 53 probes against 49 drones. The adepts are making their way to the other side of the map. First five Banelings already morphing. I'm not certain if Trigger actually saw the Baneling Nest or not. He might see the Banelings here. You should not let that shade finish up. I don't think letting it finish up is the play. He says, well, I don't care, buddy. I'm going to let it finish up anyway. Yeah, that is exactly what I meant, guys. Those are those perfect cleanups of Link Bane. Excellent job by Nikic. And that is not the start that we were looking for. Oh, oh, oh. This is often what happens when I open up with Resonating Glaive Adapts against Banes. Like against Roaches, that kind of stuff doesn't really happen. Unless it's like a perfect Roach Link surround. This was, uh, this was not good on the side of Trigger. Nikis has done a very good job in running up behind this. Trigger is going to try one more time with three additional Adapts. He's going to find a few drones this time around. Five, okay. This wasn't bad. Uh, we're gonna lose the Oracle though in the main base. The Stasis Trap did not go off. The Void Ray is not gonna get a cancel on the fourth base. Whew. I think we are in a bit of trouble. I don't think that Nikic is just gonna sit back and drop an Infestation Pit. I think he's gonna absolutely send it with Hydra Link Bane. And obviously Trigger is not gonna have a lot of Storm available, if any. He's not going to have Colossus. I'm very worried here. Maybe great force fields can save the day. Can't, we can't forget that there are no Ravagers. There's not a Roach Warren, so no Roaches means no Ravagers. No Ravagers means that we cannot break force fields. Trigger is building a War Prism, and I really hope that that is not to attack. He's actually moving out. I don't understand this, guys. Nothing in this game has so far given me the confidence that Trigger should be moving out. This feels one of these pre-programmed move-outs where we move out because we wanted to move out, but we cannot ignore how poor this game has gone so far. We'll find maybe some eco damage here. And if we're just trying to... Oh no, I don't like this at all, man. I don't like this at all for a trigger. Is there a gap in the force field? There is for Zerklings, apparently not for the Hydras and Banes. Does drop a couple of decent force fields, but it's just a matter of time before the Banelings are going to make it through. And if the Banelings connect with the heart of this Protoss army, the War Prism is going to get sniped as well by the Hydras. Why are we here? Why are we here? Can we at least save some of the units? Yes, but... No. A filled opening into a filled follow-up attack. And the Hydra Ling Bane timing was already going to be scary. It's about to be even scarier. Maybe Nick is getting a little bit carried away morphing these Banelings in the front. But he just goes for it. Banelings do connect once more with sentries. Is there a world, guys, where Trigger holds this? Uh, he uh, drops a few more force fields. Good job against the Banelings, to be fair. Shield battery is about to finish up. We could overcharge, but we have no units left. Well, we have two Immortals and a couple of Adapts, but... Okay. Overcharge is good. Overcharge is good. And we live to fight another day. Nikic did drop the Lurker, then did go up to Hive. Honestly, I think that is maybe a tiny bit questionable. 
Because if you want to be that aggressive with your Nickage, like either you play with the idea to kill your opponent and then you full go for it, spend all your pennies on Hydra Link Bane, or you don't necessarily throw away that many units and then you just wait and save those units until you can get some Lurkers out. Kind of felt we did a little bit of both here. Still think the game looks alright for Nickage, but that was a pretty damn good hold by Trigger in the end. The force fields were great. Battery overcharge really keeping us in there. Yeah, maybe he could have morphed those bailings on a different spot as well, but it's all good. This is still a game. Trigger doesn't really have a good way to gun down all these bailings, but yeah, we can lose all of our adepts. Trigger his Immortals though guys are not going to be the god tier Immortals. Nice split by the way on all those adapts. I do like that. That's going to be great against Hydras and Lynx and Banes. But obviously not so great against Lurkus. I actually think that Nikich's Lurkus are just fantastic here. Because the Immortals are not powerful. We don't have Archons. So we don't have those very tanky units. Uh, the first four and more. Uh, four. Uh, do we have an Observer here by the way? Don't forget we lost that Oracle earlier guys. We lost the Oracle. We don't have an Observer. Whew. Trigger is going to try to buy some time as a few Banelings were looking for connections with probes at the third, but a Trigger is all over it. And we have bought enough time for our Observer to make it to the front lines. Massive Adapt Counter-Attack. Nick is going to have to pull the drones here, otherwise you lose everything. Might actually lose the hatchery, what the hell? You don't often see a bunch of Adepts casually shading to the other side of the map to kill a hatch, but it's starting to look like this hatch will fall. What a snipe. <laughs> that should not have happened, but we will take it, guys. Any day of the week and twice on a Friday afternoon in the WTO code S. Risky move here with the Lurkas. Is there enough to tank for the Lurkas? Seems that the answer is yes for now. Those are slow zealots, by the way. Oh, that's a lot of slow zealots. A lot of adapts coming in from an awkward angle. Wait, I really feel that Nicket should get more Banes. I know that Banes are expensive. Yeah, he's gonna morph 18 of them now. But Banelings are so damn good against all those Adepts, all those Zealots, and even against the Immortals. Because if a Baneling splashes on the Immortal, you can activate all those barriers. And that will make it so much easier for the Lurkers to kill those Immortals. Ooh. Pretty good Baneling connections. Those were not all the Banes. Fun game between these two. <laughs> Reckless video gaming between Nickage and Trigger, but it does give us something exciting to look at. It's already closer than I think any game was between the Twisted Fairies and Team Liquid. As the Lurkers are gonna try to save this hatch, Trigger says, I think I can get on top of those six Lurkers as the Immortals are doing their thing. But three Lurkers do survive and they are getting some devastating shots off. And now the Hydras are here to save the day, but 16 drones did fall. So Nickage takes a great fight. Can the Baneling kill that final Immortal with flesh damage? Yes, they can. And one more Immortal. Very low on HP. Hydras really want it. Hydras won't get it. Oh, Zerglings in the main base could actually become very difficult. I don't think they have Adreno Glands, but obviously that's still annoying for Trigger. Trigger needs to focus on this fight. Do we have an Observer, guys? Did we lose our Observer on the left side of the map? I don't see it. Maybe you guys know where it is. Still have no ups. Oh, oh, oh. Where's the ups? The Nexus will die at 6 o'clock, and that means that Trigger is now a 3 base Protoss. He's about to become a 4 base Protoss, but he's not gonna save the bottom left side either. I don't really believe in that. We may actually have to cancel. Yeah, we do cancel. So now we're a 3 base Protoss with one Observer. One Observer on top of this army. 77 army supply against 88. Banger game, to be fair. <laughs> Not the cleanest game of StarCraft 2, guys, but it is a fun one. Will it be Trigger, who's going to take the 1-0 lead for us here in the Basilisk, or will it be Nickage, who gets the Platinum Heroes a fantastic start? What happened with Showtime? Nothing happened. I can only use three players every single week. Showtime played the last two weeks, and we decided to go with Trigger this week. Never hurts to uh, use the original tree. The core tree. But our boy's definitely in some trouble. This is not the best Protoss army ever. Oh, Lurkas, are they gonna run into this army now? 
I know Immortals are fantastic, guys, but what normally makes the Immortals fantastic is that you have units like High Templars with Psy Storm to protect them. Oh my goodness, what is happening here? This is just Immortals, and this is normally where you would think Hydra, Lings, and Lurkus aren't going to have a field day. Now some Zorks will tell you that all you need is Mass Immortal. Now we can say that Trigger is not building a lot of Immortals. <laughs> Adreno Glance is about to finish up for the Zerglings. It's going to make them a little bit more powerful, but they don't have any melee upgrades yet. Uh, Vipers are going to be so, so, so good here. Because we don't have High Templars. We don't have High Templars for Storm, so there's no reason to keep them as regular High Templars. There are some drones dying at the 9 o'clock base, but I think a lot of probes will fall as well. So far, no probes have fallen, which is impressive. Our Canadian Protoss, guys, I think truly needs a couple of basic High Templars because we need to land feedbacks. If we cannot land feedbacks, Blinding Clouds are going to be insane on all these Immortals. <laughs> Eva is going to go full mix on us saying that this game is hell for the Zerg, but I don't think it is. I think it's hell for Protoss. As you guys can see, these Abducts were fantastic. Of course, Blinding Cloud has potential, but Abducts is also always very sick. No trigger is going to keep a couple of basic high templars, but we cannot storm. That is way too many lurkers and hydras to run into. Our Nikitch is a maxed out the Belarusian Zerg with plus three missile attacks and adrenal glands on his Zerglings. He's working with five bases. Trigger is working with four and he's trying to buy some time. Four blink, four storm. I don't know if he's going to get that time. Honestly, I don't think this is a winnable fight. Reina would tell me that he would win from this position. And he would uh, offer me a hundred bucks to take the deal. And then somehow he would run circles around the Zerg army for half an hour and win it. As that is exactly what Trigger is going to try to do. But Nikic is paying attention and he burrows the lurkers in time. I mean, good counterattack though. Once more, 17 drones, guys. 17 drones is sick. And now we do have Storm. So with Storm, we are allowed to dream. Well, it's excellent by Trigger that he did not decide to take that fight. That he tried to just run away, create chaos, find damage with run buys. Like 27 drones is a silly amount of drones. And now the game looks a lot more promising because now we do have Storm. I don't want to say that it's in the back because it's absolutely not in the back. But we are allowed to dream once more on the side of our Canadian Protoss. Couple of drones are gonna fall, Storm lands, few high Templars get abducted, but feedbacks did do their thing. There's more drones dying to adapt on the left side of the map. I feel like Trigger has killed a solid 60 drones in this game. As the Vipers are starting to do their thing. I'd love to see how many drones have died. But if I have to make a guess, I would say it's like close to 70 probably. We have five lurkers going rogue in the bottom side of the map. There is no nexus there. There are some probes long distance mining. Nick is his wish. As these two armies are flirting with each other once more. Barrier gets activated. Hmm. Oh, Vipers have so much potential here. We're going to land at least one of them. This is where it would be fantastic, by the way, if we could have nice uh, storm. Solid feedback as well. A single Oracle, guys, to attack this army with Revelation would actually be kind of sick. Eva hating on the Lurkers. I'm not feeling that, Eva. I always believe in the Lurker. Oh, it didn't even know you could abduct from that far. What the hell? Vipers look better than ever before. Steph Curry is taking notes. That's how the USA is going to win another gold medal, guys. It's Steph Curry, the Viper from downtown. <laughs> Trigger is forced to cancel that Nexus on the right side as he is going to try to run on top of these five Lurkers, but Queens and Drones to the rescue. He's not winning that fight. Zellos, however, are going to kill more Drones. What is happening? How many Drones do you need to kill in a single game of StarCraft 2? <laughs> Trigger says yes. All right. That sounds like a lot. It is now Dinkage was out of position and we are going to get on top of this head. So we're going to kill two bases for the price of one, but that's a very strange recall. What on earth is that recall? So we, we save some units, but if we lose all these Immortals, we lose all these High Templars, we are still in a lot of trouble. 
And the Immortals will turn around, but the Hydra is going to move forward. That was a weird recall, guys. <laughs> Bro forgot Immortals don't have Link. Yeah, I mean, six snipe, right? Double snipe on two bases. Don't forget that this Legacy of the Void, 20 minutes into a game, your main base is done. Your natural is done. Your third base is pretty much done. So Nikish has like no economy at all. But yeah, if we don't lose our entire army, we kind of open the door for that devastating counterattack. That observer somehow lives. I have no idea how that observer is living. 111 army supply against 55. Is there potential for some dream storms? Do we believe in the dream immortals? Yes, the Zealots are gonna slice up a couple of drones. 15 more. Oh, a single lurker run by at the triangle base is fantastic on the side of the Battle of Zerk. 26 workers have died. This game is a bad game to be a drone or a probe, I'll tell you that much. Nikic seems to be happy with the damage he has dealt. Said, alright, I have taken out a base. I have killed almost all your probes at a different base. It is time for me to just re-establish those hatcheries that I desperately need. We'll take it from there. Trigger down to 18 workers. This Protoss army is not big enough, guys. It's not strong enough. There's a lot of abducts are going to land. Every single immortal melts. And it is Nikic, the Belarusian Zerg, who takes the 1-0 lead for the Platinum Heroes. He is smiling. He is happy. And rightfully so. He played that very well. Rough game for our boy. And rough start to the clan bar. I mean, it all started with the first adepts, right? The first nine, ten adepts shading right on top of those banes. That wasn't it. Trigger definitely had a lot of good moves throughout the game as well. The run buys were fantastic. He was finding good damage. Well, a couple of game ending mistakes. I think especially that recall towards the end. If the entire army just retreats up that ramp and we spam a couple storms, we took out two bases. And it's obviously uh, more than playable but that recall was horrible that recall just made it so much worse for us because it left all the immortals for dead and one or two high templars never enough to save the day there it is indeed an incredibly eastern european setup for our boy nikic reminds me of the days of Kos and stralog streaming stralog will forever be the goaded streamer with the carpet on the wall right behind him and he recorded one of the greatest Starcraft videos in history that is unfortunately no longer on YouTube. But Strelok, after one or two disappointing tournaments, decided to record camera right underneath his chin, right in front of the carpet. I promise that I will play 20 games a day. I promise I will make quarterfinals. Sick video, guys. Strelok forever a goat. <laughs> Bottom left side of Dynasty, we are looking at the main base of our Belarusian Zerg. It is Nikic taking the 1-0 lead for himself and the Platinum Heroes plus R8. Top right side, picking Dynasty. Early this season he did lose Dynasty against Chem. Hopefully that will not happen again. This is Trigger. What servers do they play? Well, if it's Central Europe, it's always West into Central. But obviously Nikic is East. But I still think it is, I think maybe game 1 is central and game 2 is west, so they flip the order. I don't think it's back to back central. But I'm not 100% certain. I don't exactly know with players from Belarus. What I do know is that I would really love Trigger to win this game. Even though we have Raynor and Serral playing and obviously they are the favorites, but... We need all three points, guys. Yeah, these games are these games are very important. We need all three points. You get all three points by winning 4-2, 5-1, or 6-0. I don't care too much if we win 4-2, 5-1, or 6-0, but we do need to win without an ace match. If the clan war would go to an ace match, we only get two points. And that obviously would allow other teams to catch up. Why not show them them? Because we obviously like Trigger, mate. And Trigger is a very good player. I mean, Showtime has been in excellent form and has obviously had great results, but Trigger is still one of the original three players of Bastilus. We believe in him. 
and he has done very well for us in some big moments, like taking a map of Beyond, taking maps of Oliveira. Obviously, in hindsight, you can always say, well, you should have sent Showtime, yes, but... So far, it's only one map. If Trigger goes one-to-one -one here, I still think we can be happy, and it's gonna be okay. It is important, though, that we go at least one-one. Showtime is fantastic, but obviously Trigger is a fantastic player too. And let's hope that he can show it to us here. First game, it didn't really go his way. Let's hope the second game it does. <laughs> we have an in-base expand, obviously, on Dynasty. So Trigger is going to get a few more minerals than he's used to. Also, transferred a bunch of probes to saturate that gold as quickly as possible. And we have to be careful here with our first two adapts. Yeah, guys, there's no need to be uh, overly dramatic after one map. <laughs> Astralog, Redock, etc. had some mini dramas in CIS as well. No. Oh, no. You mean the drama of war? I did like the EG streaming house. If you're asking me, did you enjoy the times of EG having the house and all Ben sitting next to Isra and three rexing him on the ladder or with a bunker walling? Obviously, that was very fun. I, I would lie if I say that that was not content. That was fantastic content, but other than that, I uh, know I don't need too much drama, man. I like the game, I like the storylines of all the players, I like the tournaments that we are watching. I don't care too much for drama. But there was something very beautiful about Ben playing hours of Dota, firing up his StarCraft stream, building a couple of bunkers in front of Idra, his natural on Cloud Kingdom, Idra rage quitting, <laughs> and Ben switching back to Dota. Like, yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> you have no sense of humor if you did not think that was funny. But other than that, no, there's no need for drama on my side. <laughs> Trigger is gonna go for a two base all in by the looks of it guys. As we are just warping in a lot of stalkers. We have a lot of gates. We're gonna go for a blink stalkers and a warp prism. This is a bit of a goblin special. I think these kind of builds are in general more powerful when you don't have any ping. This might be the server where Trigger has a better ping than Nickage, but it's still a little bit risky to put all your eggs in one basket. But hey, if Trigger believes in the build, if he believes that this is the way to get the job done on Dynasty, I'm gonna believe with him. As that first queen is already gonna fall, that's nice by the way, starting your attack like this with a free queen. I mean, Nickage doesn't even bother saving the third hatch. Two base against two base is never a good situation to be in. Seems like Nickage caught up, caught by surprise here a little bit. We have a couple of Zerklings that gotta surround on the adapt, but the man is supply blocked. It is such a painful moment to be supply blocked. After losing that hatchery, 500 minerals is a mental amount of minerals, guys, in a two base versus two base scenario. It does seem like we either have roaches or ravages harassing the gold base of Trigger. It is three roaches, but obviously that's not that important. What is important is that there is a monstrous amount of stalkers in the nature of the Belarusian Zerg. And as long as we don't lose our war prism into something silly like corrosive balls or queens, I think at the bare minimum we're gonna straight up kill this base or all the drums and if not just win the game. Stalkers have double blink here with blink from the Twilight Council with the War Prism pickup micro as well. And Trigger sets the record straight. This is a very convincing second game win. Few roaches are not gonna save the day. These three queens, even if they have energy, are not gonna save the day. And perhaps this is why, guys, we selected a trigger. Obviously, it's a shame it's not a 2 0, but this is still a very convincing game 2 victory. Bit of a ba uh, dynasty special, perhaps. And that means that we're all tied up. So all that we need right now is to win three out of the next four games. We've got Rainer versus Goblin coming up next. And after that, it is Serol versus Art. Uh, that was convincing. That is a good way to just erase any doubt. 20% uh, of you guys believed in a draw and it was a draw. A classic guys, two players that were invited to my Sweet 16 StarCraft tournament a long time ago. 
They are both 22 years old at the moment. A long, long time ago, they were two up-and-comers in the European scene. One had a slightly more successful Star Trek 2 career than the other. I'm obviously talking about Goblin and being part of Team Roddy for as long as he did. I mean, that's not something that many people can say. But Rainer has done all right for himself too. He did win a Katowice, he did win Game as a, he won a couple home story cups. It's not too bad. <laughs> it may not be the career that Goblin had, but it's not too bad. Oh. 